Hey, this is uh, Brett Bumiter, and uh, we're here with the uh, Greater Charlotte WordPress Meetup Group. And today, uh, Clayton is going to uh, give us all a walkthrough demonstration of how to use uh, how to use Firebug. And uh, my phone's going off right as I'm starting all this. <laughs> <laughs> um, while we're uh, doing the demonstration, everybody is going to be uh, muted except for Clayton's because he's using the Google Hangout screen share, and uh, we'll open things up for general comments or discussions uh, after he's done. So I'm going to uh, uh, turn this over to Clayton and uh, let you get started. Okay. So hey. Hi, everybody. Everybody uh, that's watching and everybody that's in uh, the meeting. Uh, well. First of all, whoever doesn't know what Firebug is, Firebug is a plugin uh, that helps you inspect your HTML and CSS in real time in your web browser. And you can actually make changes in real time and make, you know, it helps you to identify different elements of your website. So you can make the changes in CSS. Uh, let me see. Now, in order to get Firebug, there's a couple ways to download it. You can either, uh, can you see my screen? Okay, you can see it. All right. To get Firebug, there's a couple ways to download. You can go to getfirebug.com or you can click on uh, tools, add ons, and fi if you're uh, using a Firefox browser, go to tools, add ons. And when the search box comes up, uh, you can just search for Firebug, and you can install it that way. So you know it's a couple ways, and it's another. It's a command line prompt also that you can use to install it. Uh, so anyway, all right, Firebug. Uh, Firebug is open source, and it's free, and it's very useful. Uh, now they have different versions of Firebug. If you're using Firefo Firefox, uh, you can download the full version of Firebug, and they have a Firebug Lite for other browsers as well. But they lack some functionality of the full version of Firebug. Um, you know the features. Some of the features I think is lacking. I think uh, the Firebug Lite doesn't have the JavaScript uh, debugging features, and uh, I think there's a few more features it doesn't have. I mean, if you go on this website, like I said, getfirebug.com, you can look over the features and the documentation. It's very useful. Uh, this website even has uh, some video tutorials and it has a lot of helpful information, but. Anyway, let's get down to what Firebug does. Now, uh, once you install Firebug, let me close this window at the bottom. All right, once you install Firebug, uh, well, I'm in Firefox, you know, it may display differently in some browsers, but once you install it, you'll see at the top right hand corner of your screen, you'll see this little Firebug. And it you know, it, if you hover over it, it show you the status. Right now, it's deactivated. Okay, and you know, there's a couple ways to open Firebug. You can simply, you know, click the actual Firebug, or you can hover over any element on whatever website you're on, and you can right-click on it, go down to Inspect with Firebug. Same thing happens, the window pops up at the bottom. Okay, so now, okay, this is the Firebug uh, window. You can open it up in its own window, or you can open it up like I have it here at the bottom of the browser. Here, let me go ahead and make it a little larger, my window a little larger so we can see what's going on. Okay, all right, now, on the left side here, you'll see the list of the HTML for the page and as you see as, as I hover over different elements in the HTML code it highlights it in the browser okay and alright so if I wanted to select uh, you know let's say I want to select uh, this header wrapper if I hover over it and I click on it I'm sorry click on it and to the right you'll see the CSS that governs that uh, the look of that element on a page. Uh, for anybody that doesn't know what CSS is, uh, it stands for Cascaded Style Sheets. And 
uh, mostly every theme that you might download in WordPress is going to have a style sheet. Uh, okay, let's go. Now, if you uh, click on this bug in the top left hand corner, it brings down the menu for Firebug where you can customize it and, you know, set certain settings that, you know, might help you with whatever you're using Firebug for. Uh, the second one is an inspector cursor and you can hover over if you notice as I hover over elements in my page it actually creates a border around it to let you know to indicate you know which element uh, is currently active and if you look down the HTML panel at the bottom left hand corner it actually highlights it and it's great for identifying you know what the names of the elements in your site are for when you want to make changes let's say I want to make changes to say I want to make changes to my navigation or my header alright let's say I want to make changes to my header okay here I hover over my header if I click on it it'll freeze it there and you can see it highlights it in the HTML panel and to the right is all the CSS that governs the style of my uh, header also, uh, we have different windows over here. This, uh, if you look over to the right, this is the actual uh, CSS code that governs the HTML. If you click on this computed tab, this is a browser's uh, computed version of the CSS, and this may vary depending on what browser you're using. Uh, this layout tab is great for, you know, identifying. Uh, the padding, the margins on on different elements. Let's say I, let's see, if I click here on my slideshow image, you'll notice that at the top and bottom. Oh, I'm sorry, it's changing. So all right. Anyway, I'm sorry. One second. Let me go to a page that has a still image because apparently. Slideshow is not acting too great. Okay. All right. Now we'll notice if I click on sorry, I have to click on my cursor. Okay, if I if I click on this element on my website, it shows me the dimensions. It shows me the padding. I currently don't have any padding on this image. Uh, if I had a border, it would show me how many, how wide the border is, uh, and of course, the margin is on the outside of the border, which separates it from any other elements on the page, and it lets you know also. Uh, now, let's do a simple change. All right, so this is something that has been annoying me on my website, and it's this ugly red that is on the active article for this page. So let's go back to oh, I'm sorry. Uh, this DOM tab is also for uh, JavaScript properties. Uh, you can actually do, like I said, JavaScript debugging with Firebug. That's actually outside of the scope of this. Uh, walk through so you know I'm not gonna get too much into that but you can actually debug JavaScript code and you know it's a great tool I mean for CSS and JavaScript alright now let's say I want to change the color of this from red to let's say I'll change it to I don't know gray alright so Let me see. All right. I'm going to hover over it and I'm going to look for. Okay, and you can see over here in the CSS panel, right here, I see where uh, they have a background property that governs 
uh, the look of that element. And if I hover over this hexadecimal code, you'll see this is the pink that uh, I was looking for. Okay, so let's highlight that. And we can make changes right here in the browser. So let me see. I'm going to change this to, let's see, I'm going to choose a different red, probably this. Okay, and this red, it, I mean, it's still ugly, as you can see, but you can see the changes have been made here in a browser from that light pinkish red to a more dark maroon red around it. Now, I made the change in my browser, but you, what you have to realize about Firefox is uh, these changes are not permanent. So, if, you know, I was to reload the page, let's say, of course it's going to go back to that bright pinkish red, okay? So you might be asking, well, how do I keep the changes that I make with Firebug? All right, well, let's go back to it, and we're going to change this back to the red that I had specified before. Okay, and now, okay, I use Woo themes for my themes. Uh, there's a couple different ways that you can uh, apply the CSS into your WordPress site. Um, here is a back end of my website, and when I click on the theme options, it has, uh, and I'm pretty sure, they have a plugin where you can apply custom CSS right in the back end also. Uh, but if you look here, there's a box for custom CSS. All right, so now let's say, and for anybody that doesn't know where the cascading comes from, uh, the, the last or the most recent declaration of any property is going to override any declarations that you previously had. So, you know, it really doesn't matter. Uh, you know, if this is already declared in uh, my other style sheet, the parent style sheet, uh, you know, if I declare it, it's going to override it if I declare it in my custom CSS panel. So what I'm going to do, and you could just right click and go to copy rule declaration. If you go to copy style declaration, it's just going to copy the actual styles of properties, uh, copy rule declaration will copy everything from the element declaration and the style and everything. So we're going to go here and we're going to paste. Okay, and if you notice, all right, it pastes the whole declaration, but I didn't make any changes to any of this other stuff. So you know, for the sake of keeping my CSS sure, I'm going to erase that. Get rid of some white space. And I'm going to go to save all changes. Okay, so I saved all my changes. And if I go back out on the website and I refresh it this time. You'll notice that now it's a permanent change instead of being temporary. Okay, and also uh, what I wanted to point out uh, in the CSS panel, you can disable any changes that you've made. If you hover over to the left of any of the properties, uh, you can toggle them off. Now you see once I toggle that off, it shot back to that ugly pink, or you can toggle them back on. And that's useful also for, you know, determining what properties are affecting different elements of the page to make sure that you are actually uh, making changes. If you notice as I go over them and I click on them, you know, it makes minor changes to the site, which will give you a key to which properties you want to make changes to in order to change uh, specific elements on your page. Okay, uh, let me see.
Okay. Now that's one way to change your CSS. Now, let's say uh, you don't have this panel on the back end and you want to make the changes directly to your style sheet. Well, if you go to Appearance and Editor, and hopefully it'll open up uh, my style sheet first. Okay, uh, if you notice here, I don't have uh, any declarations here in my style sheet because this is actually a child theme and I declared a separate style sheet so you know it inherits its styles from its parent style sheet which is uh, declared here but I can also just like I added my code to the custom CSS box panel in my theme options I can also copy my code here and it'll have the same effect because it's going to overwrite any previous declarations of any of these properties that are in the parent style sheet so I mean I'm not going to hit update file because I already declared it so I'm just going to erase it. I just wanted to show you guys and you know to have ultimate control uh, you can also you know change your files on your uh, local testing server and you know uh, use FTP to update uh, any CSS files that you make any changes to alright I'm trying to make sure alright these breadcrumbs uh, let me see All right, let's say you want to make a change. I'm sorry, before I move on, if you guys, I don't want to just keep talking. I don't know if anybody had any questions up to this point. Uh, Brett, if you can. Uh, I, uh, I'm i unmuted. You, uh, Ganti and uh, Steve, if you've got any questions, you might need to okay, unmute I do yourselves. See yeah, I do see some comments on the side. I'm sorry, I didn't have oh, a no, chance to oh, uh, no read them. <laughs> yeah, we were just uh, kind of cross-posting a couple things, but I don't think anything was... Super urgent. I mean, uh, all right. Let me see. Gianti said, had a lot of trouble figuring out the div class and ID, which one can make change. And okay. I kind of run into that from time to time, too. Usually I troubleshoot my way. You know, I'll try one, I'll try changing one thing, see if that fixes it, then try changing another and another until I get to the right level. But uh, does that make sense? Is there a better way? <laughs> well, let me see. Well, figuring out div class and ID. Well, uh, basically, uh, a div is a block element. Uh, a class, you know, and I'm not an expert on CSS, so don't get me wrong. But from what I understand, a div is a type of block element. A class, uh, you know, would be a set of properties that you would set, that, you know, that would affect any element that you uh, set to uh, adhere to that class. And, all right, you know, I'm, I'm not really understanding the question. Uh, you're ha having a lot of uh, trouble figuring out the div class and ID, which one to make changes to. I mean, it depends on the situation, though, to Ganti. Uh, it depends on what you're trying to make changes to in your page. Of course, if you make whatever one you make changes to, if you make changes to, you know, uh, a certain div, it's only going to affect things that are inside of that divider. If you, uh, and same for class and ID. Now, you know, if it's a block element, such as a divider or a paragraph tag, or something of that nature. Now, you know, this is uh, dealing with CSS and not really a uh, fire bug, but, you know, if you make changes, then you, you have to realize anything that has that property, anything that's set to adhere to that class that, you know, or that you set, it's going to change every element within your website. So, let me see. Let me see. And that's the power of Firebug also is determining, you know, like which different elements or where did my window go? I'm sorry. All right. So if you look here, uh, 
Can you guys still see my screen? I'm sorry. Nope. You'll have to turn the screen share back oh, on. Okay. I think. Okay. No problem. Screen share. Okay, it's back. Okay. All right. Now, if you look here, you can see these different elements are separated. You have your dividers here, and your dividers have IDs, different IDs. Now, these dividers are block elements, which mean that they automatically uh, break at the end of the line, and you can set you know, uh, your padding, your uh, margins, your borders, and things of that nature to these block elements. Uh, they all have IDs. Now, this ID wrapper, I'll click on it. Let's see. All right, now if I click on it now, if you notice over here to the right, now this shows you all of the CSS that governs uh, this specific ID uh, or this specific div with this ID wrapper. Now, you know, properties can either be set to uh, divs or you can set the, pro the properties to uh, wrapper. And, you know, any uh, divider that you set with this ID of wrapper will be affected by it. Now, you know, header tags are also uh, block elements. Here you can see, if I click on this, to the right, it'll show you different properties that are set for headers. Here, uh, this is an ID, single portfolio, uh, and you see here, you know, it affects elements, H3 elements inside uh, this single portfolio and sidebar, sidebar portfolio elements. So any H3s that are inside the single portfolio and, you know, this uh, property here, sidebar portfolio, are going to be affected by what's inside of this declaration here. So, I mean... Let me see. Of course, here, this is an unordered list with an ID of, I think that says MM1. So, you know, anything, any unordered list, if you look here, you know, you have to kind of, you know, like I said, too, you can play around with different things. You can disable, you know, different uh, properties on the page to see, you know, what will affect what. And you got to kind of, you know, get a feel for it. You know, I'm not an expert at CSS. Uh, I'm not an expert at Firebug. You know, I'm just a developer. I mean, so, I mean, you know, but you just got to kind of play around with it. And, you know. Hello. Yep, that makes sense. Okay. And you... All right. So I mean, uh, I'm I'm sorry. I mean, did I miss anything? Is I mean, Steve had, oh, Go ahead. No, go ahead. Go ahead, Brett. Uh, Steve had a good point in the in the chat room, and I'm not sure. Uh, Steve, if you want to chime in, you'll have to unmute. Um. To unmute, if you hover over your image, you'll you'll see a little microphone down at the lower hand corner. And... All right, <clears throat> yeah, I got. Um. So you you had a good point about uh, uh, when you're making the changes, uh, you know, getting those eventually to your main style CSS file or or uh, depending um, on if you're using child style sheets or something too, maybe as uh, opposed to running the database. But, yeah, that's just the way. I mean, I do it. There's obviously lots of plugins and the the Woo themes and Elegant themes and all those companies. They all have their ability to do it in the admin section or their panels, and then WordPress obviously can do it in the uh, editor section for any theme. Um, 
the things I don't like about doing it inside of WordPress is there's no undo. Uh, you can't control Z to get yourself back. There's no revisioning. Um, it's, it's dangerous. Um, you accidentally hit uh, delete all or select all delete right before you save and you're screwed. Um, additionally, uh, I've had some plugins that conflict so they would overwrite their your CSS with a different uh, meta tag or post meta tag. Mm -hmm. um, so it, I've been burned, but doesn't mean it's it's still a good functionality. It's still completely useful. Yeah, no, I I would agree, and I would add to that. So there's a uh, some some plugins they'll have their own style sheet just for that particular plugin, and it kind of depends on where in the order of things that, that plugin style sheet gets launched, what's going to happen? So is it going to be your main style sheet followed by the plugin style sheet? Or will it interject somewhere in between? Or uh, several different things can happen. In the uh, uh, When we were chatting in the chat room, I mentioned that I sometimes use a, uh, a WordPress plugin called My Custom CSS. There's also one called PC Custom CSS. Um, I use that typically when I'm developing something, when I'm trying to get the changes uh, going instead of doing a lot of uh, FTP back and forth through some of the changes, I'll 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 make my CSS changes within this uh, plugin through WordPress, uh, which saves it to the database, which is slower ultimately with with load times and things like that. Once I've got it all figured out, I uh, I, I then copy my changes and load them into the style sheet wherever they need to go. Um, or sometimes too, if uh, one thing I'd mention is that I, I uh, sometimes put the uh, I comment out my original CSS style sheet items, and uh, uh, but I leave them there so that I always know what my original style sheet looked like. If I I, I always save a copy as well somewhere, but uh, um, a couple best practices. Okay. All right, so uh, Steve, I see you say you should only have one ID per page, whereas classes can be repeated. Yeah, that's um, the, that's the to get validation from HTML or uh, W3.org. Yeah, that's how it needs to be. If you have more than one ID, you'll get a a, a, a ding from that standpoint, but it's not. It won't hurt you at all. Obviously, it's just a matter of organization and technique. And you can make changes to IDs as well as to classes, correct? I mean, it's the same. Yeah. Principle, right. I think we all someone. I think we all picked up where they're com some comparing IDs and divs, and those are not the same thing. Right. Okay. Yep. Good point. And here's the the link to uh, uh, W3C, their CSS validator for anybody that needs it from the video. Very handy. Um, both to as sometimes as you're doing trial and error stuff, which is the way, unfortunately, I tend to do things, <laughs> due to a, a lack of a better way. But uh, right. I, I always go back through CSS validator and try to to get things to validate back down. That sometimes if I've got layers of issues popping in there, um, you know, maybe I've got a background color that's you know shows up once and then gets overwritten somewhere down below because I've gotten messy. Um, you know, sometimes. Uh, if I've mess, you know, if I forgot to add a semicolon and close something out, uh, this will help catch those items. Uh, it will catch some of those conflicts, and definitely a, a good practice uh, in general. Shit. Uh, I mean, that's pretty much it. Firebug is pretty simple. I mean, it's pretty simple, man. It's a great tool to use. I mean, it's really. I mean, without getting into, you know, all of the JavaScript stuff, it's really not too much to talk about as far as, you know, change, you know, uh, expected CSS with Firebug. I don't know if I missed, if I missed anything. Uh, I can't really think of good. Uh, I really appreciate it. And Steve, how do you fix that page ID? Um, uh, I'm sorry? How do you fix a page ID? Fix it in what sense? Um, you're saying that you can only have one page ID? Oh, um, no, you can only have one ID uh, in, in CSS. Uh, when you have an ID, you can only have one keyword, one word, one phrase, or one one uh, selector. Um, 
So like heading or div ID equals wrapper, you should only have that once. Okay. Sounds good. Well, uh, I think that pretty much probably wraps up what we can cover with Firebug today. Uh, anybody got anything else they want to share or add or request for next time or anything like that? No. Do you any of you use iTunes uh, Builder? Mm, I haven't. I haven't touched that one yet myself either. Okay. Yeah, I looked into the uh, SAS and less Brett. Remember we were talking about that last week. I I I do remember, and and actually, you know, I found in one of my old to do lists from like five months ago that I had in t that back then I had heard about. Uh, less as well, <laughs> and, and I had forgotten all about it, but I haven't gotten into that yet either. I need to one of these days. Have yeah, you kinda, uh, been doing more with it, or have you touched well, it yet? Well, I was researching it, and it was saying, like, you know, it takes care of, like, uh, the browse, browser support issues, you know, like, uh, instead of having to write, uh, you know, different... Uh, different statements for different browsers, you know, like, uh, you know, a CSS3 with a lot of uh, stuff that isn't supported by certain browser, you have to add prefixes for certain browsers. You don't have to do that with when you use SAS or less or something like that. The problem is with that is, you know, as uh, support grows for the different browsers, for the features for different browsers, you know, that's going to, uh, you know, it, it kind of causes it to, I mean, you don't have I don't know, you know, like it's extra code, I guess, basically, that doesn't have to be there as, you know, the browser support grows and you don't need those prefixes. Uh, have you ever used SAS or less, Steve? No, I haven't. You haven't? Okay. No. Yeah, and uh, here's the, the link. I don't have uh, SAS, but less is a, a dynamic style sheet language, essentially. Um, so there, there's a lot more. I've heard some good things about it, especially working in the, you know, trying to get themes to behave dynamically. Um, uh, that's uh, always a, a challenge, especially when you start using plugins, because that have, if a plugin's got its own style sheet, uh, uh, that can sometimes throw you off. Uh, sliders are always uh, uh, are always the things that are driving me nuts when I'm trying to make the rest of the site dynamic, and then getting a slider that's dynamic too is just about impossible sometimes. But, Do you uh, use Slider Pro? I've used... I don't know if I've used that. That sounds familiar, but all the names sound... I've used uh, Slide Deck 1 and 2 and uh, many others that I've just found here and there that I couldn't uh, name. From Code Canyon, uh, Slider Pro seems to be having a lot of good reviews, so... Is it dynamic, though? Does it resize for mobile devices? Yeah. It, it, it is... Uh, from all different sources, I heard that uh, it's, I think, a $26 plugin, uh -huh. and uh, it works on uh, all the uh, responsive themes and also mobile uh, devices. So. Okay, I'll have to check it out. Uh, and that's, yeah. uh, if I'm doing a, I see it on Code Canyon, I also see a slidepro.net, but I'm not sure if that's the same thing. Yeah, Slide Pro. Okay, cool. Uh, but I will confirm that. I'll send you an email about that. Okay. Um, yeah. Are you guys uh, doing responsive design now? Do you think that is the future? And uh, also doing a separate mobile site compared to doing your main site in the responsive and allowing it to be uh, presented on the mobile devices. What are some thoughts about those? Wow. I generally do with my new sites. Um, I haven't gone back to update or change all of my old sites, but I'm trying to, as I do new sites, make them responsive as I go going forward. Right. Well, as far as, you know, having run a full site on a mobile device, you know, you, users probably won't need all of the features that they would use on a full site, you know, uh, as opposed to, you know, accessing from their mobile device. So, uh, you know, I would always, you know, prepare, you know, uh, program a separate uh, mobile uh, site for mobile devices, you know, and, you know, take out some of that functionality, especially with uh, 
bandwidth being an issue now, you know, with a lot of these phone companies getting rid of their unlimited uh, data yeah. plans and stuff mm -hmm. like that. So, you know, it's definitely a good practice. Yeah, that's a good point. I was just wondering, as you were mentioning that, if there's a mobile version of Firebug, uh, um, for like a, a review of a mobile, you know, what the mobile view would be. They actually do have. Um, they actually do have a. I forget what it's called. I did read something about that. Seems like I've seen a couple examples, but I can't remember if they were quite the same. I've seen some browser resizers, but not uh, a full-on firebug dig into the mobile CSS type of thing. Maybe a topic for a different day. <laughs> I don't want to get too far into the weeds on what <laughs> Um, th this is a, a link to a um, another extension for Chrome and, and Firefox. It's called Web Developer, and one of the when you install and play with it, one of the options is you can look at a responsive views, and then it just has a list of all the different views, like ta tablet portrait landscape, uh, iPhone portrait landscape, Android portrait landscape, that kind of stuff. You can make your own sizes, so you, you can instantly see all the different views in one page. Okay, cool. And uh, for uh, people watching, that's uh, uh, if you search through Firefox add-ons, that's Web Developer 1.2.2 by uh, uh, Chris uh, Pederick or Pederick. So, okay. The links a little bit. The links in the chat room for everybody that's here. That Steve just shared. It's kind of a long link. <laughs> 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 All right. Well, cool. Well. Uh, I guess uh, thanks, everyone. Uh, appreciate a, a good session. I learned uh, a couple new things about Firebug that I hadn't uh, seen before myself, and, and uh, that was definitely helpful. And I hope everybody else in the group that's watching this video uh, kind of on demand via YouTube uh, will get some help out of it as well, and uh, we'll see what we can do and what we'll cover next time. So if you've got uh, ideas uh, or questions, uh, if you want to cover something yourself, uh, shoot me an email and, and we can set that up. Or if you've got questions and and just want to learn something and haven't seen it yet, uh, let us know and we can try and see if we've got somebody in the community that can share that too. So with that, I'm going to end the broadcast. And uh, if you guys have any, if you guys want to chat or something quickly afterwards, you can stay on the line and we'll go from there.